Hi, everyone. Bob Berg back with another episode of Go Giver Influencers Facebook Live. Today's episode is Influential Entrepreneur, and that's exactly who we have on today as a guest. You know, it's interesting about entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship, by the very nature of the thing, really uh, provides two purposes. One is it, is it creates value for the marketplace. It might be through solving a problem. It might be through bringing something that people want. It might be entertainment. It might be whatever it is. And we know it does because if it doesn't, it's not going to last. The business isn't going to last, right? Especially in a, well, only in a free market-based economy where no one is forced to buy from anyone else. Uh, the only way that entrepreneurial venture is going to have legs is if if it serves, if it serves a need in some way. So uh, a successful entrepreneurial venture fills a need for the marketplace. It also fills a need for the entrepreneur because by and large, an entrepreneur becomes an entrepreneur uh, because they have something special in their life that only this venture can fulfill. Uh, typically with an entrepreneur, it's not so much about the money. Now, you know how when people say, well, it's not about the money, it's usually exactly about the money. Well, with entrepreneurship, it's sort of a different thing. Now that does, hey, some people that is their driving force and to them, entrepreneurship is simply a way to make a lot of money and that's fine for what it is. If they're gonna do that, they still have to serve a lot of people with exceptional value or they can't make money. But I find with mo most entrepreneurs, that's not really it. There's a, a bigger purpose. Now, uh, one of my favorite stories about this is the story of Amar Bose. Uh, I blogged about him, uh, I think a year or two ago. Amar Bose was the son of uh, Lebanese immigrants. And, and here's part, just part of the blog. Amar Bose was finishing his doctorate at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. Uh, in 1956, when he treated himself to a new hi-fi stereo system at Radio Shack. But when he tried out his new purchase, he was appalled by the awful acoustics. The inability of modern speakers to replicate live sounds, he said, became, quote, a problem that began to obsess me. That obsession would eventually make him a household name, a billionaire, and a legend in the world of high-fidelity acoustics. Amar Bose. Bose. Right now, the funny thing is, it wasn't money, but it was an a passion, an obsession that drove him. But one might ask, wasn't the money great? He was a billionaire. I'm sure the money was fantastic. Money's fantastic. It gives you a lot of choices. But that's not why he did. In fact, he was quoted as saying that he was not only. Uh, oh, here's what he's quoted as saying, and I found it not only was profound, profound, but it was typical of most entrepreneurs. And that's this, I never went into business to make money, but so that I could do interesting things that hadn't been done before. Ah, ooh, I love that. Now, this really summarizes our guest uh, because Glenn Garns, I wanna talk to you about Glenn Garns. I wanna tell you about Glenn Garns. Uh, this guy, and, and I'm not to ask him about this, but I think it's been about 20 years since we've known each other or so. And I think we've only met in person maybe twice in our, our lives, but, but the man's like a brother to me, okay? And Glenn is a, a retired trial attorney who made an important pivot from the practice of law into a mission-centered career around creating opportunities for others to invest in their growth and self-education. He loves people, and he especially loves to support um, the efforts of others to create lifestyles they desire by being more, doing more, and as a result, having more. Uh, now he's the president of Small Business CEO. He calls himself a connector because he believes that the evolution of humanity is dependent on our ability to evolve as individuals and to work together as a community. He just started a new personal development community called Abundant Society. The website is tipsonsuccess.com. He also has an exciting online event coming up next month, which we'll discuss later. It's called Abundance in 30 Days. The website to that is abundanceinthirtydays.com. And of course, our wonderful, awesome Shannon uh, will be posting these in the discussion windows. Hi, Glenn Garns. Welcome. Hey, Bob. Thank you so much for having me. This is just wonderful. 
Oh, thanks. Now, was I right? Is it what 20, 25 years or so uh, since I, I, I think I saw your, I saw a press release on you when you made the switch from lawyer to entrepreneur and I wrote to you or something and we've kind of been friends ever since. I'm amazed that you remember that story because I have it emblazoned in my mind from, from like as if it was yesterday. You sent me one of your little patented cards <laughs> telling me about a terrific idea my little press release contained. And you sent me a courtesy copy of Endless Referrals, and the rest is history. I mean, we have been friends. I forgot that I did that. It was amazing. So, so, so we've kind of come full circle. I mean, we invited you to come out to Maryland to speak at an event that I hosted, and now you're having me on your, on your live stream. Which <laughs> back when we were first friends, when we first became friends, there was no such thing as Facebook. Nobody, there was no live streaming. So the, the idea is that um, it's been quite a while. It's been almost 20 years. Okay, so I want to know your story. I want you to share it. Well, I kind of do, but I, I want you to share it with everyone, though. Your personal story. You were a lawyer, and I imagine you had to be a good one. If I know you, you, you had to be doing well, but it wasn't fulfilling you personally, at least uh, not enough that it had to, right? Well, that's true, but before we get into this story, I want to, I want to do something real quick here. Okay. I just want the audience to know that I am a true go-giver <laughs> believer. I have a special se- – I have a pretty impressive library, but this – this is a special section of my library that I love dearly. So I am a Bob Berg disciple from way back wow. and I have consumed and benefited from everything you've ever said, done, or thought. <laughs> oh, thank you, Glenn. So, I, I appreciate that. Now, now with that in mind, going back to my law practice, I was the kind of kid growing up that every kid was. We wanted to make our parents proud. And being the first lawyer in the family was something that was on my radar screen because I knew it was something that my parents would say, wow, we've got the first lawyer in the family kind of thing. And I can't tell you whether I psyched myself into wanting to be a lawyer. I knew I wasn't good in math, so I wasn't going to med school. <laughs> but, I, but so law seemed to be okay. But my intentions were largely to make my parents proud. And I assumed that if I was able to make my parents proud and be successful, in the practice of law, that I would be happy. Well, that turned out not to be true because while my bank account was full, my heart was empty. Mm. As the longer I practiced law, the more I started to realize that I wasn't really feeling joy and excitement over the concept. I was good at it. Yeah. I mean, I, anybody that can be a show off can be good in the, in the <laughs> jury, as long as you are selling your, you know, I was there to sell my client's case, but the bottom, and I was pretty decent at that. Mm -hmm. But my point was that when I walked out of the courtroom, I felt like I left the stage and I was on, I was on, I was performing, but I wasn't in real life who I wanted to be, who I had to be in the courtroom. And that troubled me. So I made the decision eventually to get out of the practice of law. And that was traumatic because a lot of people were like, why would you leave a successful practice of law? My parents asked that question a million times. And I said, because 20 years of pride is enough for you all. I'm doing to go do what I want to do now. But, but seriously, I, I think that when I made that decision, it was traumatic because the whole concept of leaving behind something that was being successful economically was, was kind of a new concept. When I left the practice of law, the only other thing I knew how to do that anyone cared about was how to generate business through referrals, which is how you and I met. I was writing, I was, I was putting together a program to teach people how to create referrals in their business and how to be a rainmaker on a relationship basis in their business. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, it was terrifying for me to make that decision, but that was one of the most important pivots that I've ever made in my businesses. It was, it was difficult to make the decision, but the bold move paid off. And so ultimately, I ended up doing what we're doing today in, in my current endeavor, which was I started by teaching people how to generate business through referrals. You remember, I created Referral University. Right. And I was teaching a free workshop called 10 Mistakes We Make at Networking Events and How to Avoid Them as an introduction to Referral University. So I got a very early introduction to the concept of being able to help people through self-help education, through personal development, to be better at who they are and what they do in this context, in a business context. And I never looked back. I have actually, you know, absolutely enjoyed everything that I've done, some of it being successful, some of it being less successful, but I enjoyed the journey. Well, like, like all of us, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, our story, I mean, our entrepreneur story is, you know, yeah. it's up and down and sideways and, you know, all kinds of things. But the point is the journey is as much a part of the, um, of, of the enjoyment 
even when it's not going in your not going your way. So I well, so I want to ask you about that then, because you know I think people from the outside, maybe those who are not entrepreneurs, look at an entrepreneur. You know, again, being money driven. And again, I'm not saying I, I'm. Hey, I'm a free market capitalist. I love making money and using it for the purposes that we use it for, which is whatever a person uses it for. Um, so I'm not denigrating. I'm not, oh, no, for the money. No, not at all, of course. But as I was talking about Amar Bose, would you agree with that, that most of us who are entrepreneurs in one form or another, money is not the driving factor. It's the result, hopefully, but it's not the driving factor. And it sounds like that was it for you. Have you found that same thing with the entrepreneurs you've coached? I have found almost to a one that entrepreneurs are looking for a way to express themselves right. and yes, to find yes. a way to make money at it. Okay. Right. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with making money when you pursue your mission, but very few entrepreneurs have the mission of simply making money. Right. Does that make sense? I, that you said it so much better than I did and <laughs> much more succinctly. So, so, I, so, so yes, my, my experience has been that in conversations with entrepreneurs, both people I've coached and my colleagues and anyone else, we always find that the common thread is that we wanted to be able to have an impact in the world. We wanted to be able to do something to, to correct a situation, improve a situation, or create a new situation, new opportunities for people. And the bottom line is that in the process of doing that, we were able to find a way to monetize our efforts. Mm -hmm. You So you break it down into four specific areas, in a sense, uh, four reasons you go into business that you become an entrepreneur. Purpose uh, is one, uh, which you discussed, having that drive that you, you, know, you have to express yourself through this business. Uh, there's number two, impact, serving others. Um, three is income, of course. That's the effect. That's the echo of value. And then four, and I want you to talk about this, which you call legacy. And I, I always love that topic. And I love hearing different people who are experts, such as you, your take on legacy. What does it mean to you? So if we start with impact uh, or with purpose, that's where we're talking about mission. Most entrepreneurs start with an idea and they would like to see that life be breathed into the idea. And, be, and the idea is usually one that is going to solve a problem for someone, make things easier for them, create new opportunities for them, or a combination of all those things. That's what drives most entrepreneurs, the creative vision that is like bottled up inside them that cannot be expressed through the practice of law, for example, in my own, in, in my own instance. But whatever is holding them back, they, they just have to get this out. And, what, and Dr. Bose's idea for the, uh, for the Bose speaker system kind of speaks for itself. I mean, he, you know, he didn't go to MIT thinking he was going to create a speaker system that was going to revolutionize acoustics and, 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 and hi-fi fidelity. He had a need. And when he realized that he could do something to impact that, he wanted to share that with others. And he was very handsomely rewarded for that. Mm -hmm. And so the bottom line is that it all starts with purpose. His purpose, and as you laid out, was to improve hi-fi fidelity. Uh, high fidelity. And, and in the process, he not only did that, accomplished it, but made a ton of money. So, yeah, purpose is where it starts for most entrepreneurs. Yeah, Steve Jobs wanted to make a ding in the universe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a great example. I'm glad you used that one because I was thinking about that earlier today. Steve Jobs, in creating the uh, initially, the, the, you know, the Apple computer, let's talk about the iPhone, just an example. Steve Jobs, in creating the iPhone, wanted to make it possible for people to communicate in ways they never dreamed of. And today, most of us use our telephones for, I mean, our cell phones for everything but a phone call. So right. the bottom line is he was successful. No one can deny that he was handsomely rewarded for that. But his purpose was to improve the quality of communication that we can experience with each other. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Glenn, I want to uh, just for a moment go to the discussion window. A bunch of great people here. We saw uh, Sherry uh, Thompson earlier. Stephanie Newman is with us. I um, want to say hi again, Anthony Inarino, who is uh, author of a, a number of, of books, his, his latest one, uh, Eat Their Lunch. This is about um, when you're in a business in which when you make your sales calls, the, your prospective customer is already doing business with someone else. And so I'm, I just, just started this book, very excited about it. Uh, and of course, Anthony is one of four hosts, one of four people I call the Fabulous Four, who are he, Mike Weinberg, Jeb Blunt, Mark Hunter, who are uh, hosting uh, uh, Outbound in uh, Atlanta in uh, early 
2018. Jordan Thomas is with us. He's a great guy. Hans Jorgen Skibans from Bergen, Norway. Hello, Hans. So great to see you. And uh, Jeff West, and I don't know if you know Jeff, Glenn, uh, but Jeff was a, at one time, just a huge uh, leader in Aflac. Uh, he was my client at one time. He's been on the show before a couple of, he's been both on the podcast and on Facebook Live. He now has a, a book out, The Unexpected Tour Guide, and he has some others. He has an amazing sales system. This guy is a pro. Uh, Al Dalla uh, uh, from Canada. Hello, Al. Great to see you. And let's see who else. Jesse Ramos joined. Hello, Jesse. Maria Chin joined. Hello, uh, Monique Cocotte Tremblay. Uh, comment allez-vous? Croissant avec fromage. That's croissant with cheese. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Carrie Lowe. Hello, Carrie. Uh, let's see. I said Stephanie Newman earlier. And uh, let's see. I think we uh, get a few. Okay. Um, oh, I love what Carrie Lowe said, Glenn. Legacy, making a difference that ripples through eternity. Ooh. 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 Make a uh, note of that one. Uh, yeah, and so if anybody has any questions, if you have any questions for Glenn, please uh, put it into the discussion window, and I will make the effort to go back and, and look and, uh, and do that. So, Glenn, I have a question for you. You know, I'm thinking about when I started in sales, which is an entrepreneurial venture, even though you're working within another company, you're, you're an entrepreneur, if not an entrepreneur in this case. But, um, but I remember what was helpful to me, of course, was learning how to sell. And that got me along the way, but that wasn't the biggie. The big thing with me was when I started getting into personal development. And I'm thinking with any entrepreneur, of course they have to go, they have to have that core competency. They have to know their product or service. They have to know what they're doing. They have to know how to service it. They need, you know, they need to, the product must work. They need to really, as Joe Calloway, great colleague of mine, wrote in his book, a book called Become the Best at What Matters Most, right? You've got to be good at what you're doing. But that's, that's only part way. I found that my sales career took off. And I think for most people, and I, I think you would agree with this, it all began to really take off when I became a student of personal development. Your thoughts? Yeah. And, and that, that is what I found was missing in my law practice was that I was not being in, I wasn't being uh, rewarded with the opportunity to fully express my desire to grow in a, in an industry that was very conservative, very stifled, very, very rote. And, and I felt like I could have a greater impact than just representing one person at a time in front of a jury. So I actually got my start with personal power from Anthony Robbins of all people, because I watched infomercials on Saturday morning and that was the way it was sold back then. And that opened up a whole new world to me of the entire concept of investing in yourself through personal development, self-help education. And for me, it just, it, I mean, it was an epiphany. I was like, wow, this is something that should be done for a life as a lifestyle, not just a book you read or, or, or a course that you took. And, and I started to realize and really appreciate the fact that, when you invest in yourself, you're not only becoming more valuable to yourself, but you're also creating an opportunity for you to be more valuable to others and to share your gifts and talents and genius with others and enrich the world in that way. And I actually feel that the opposite is also true. When you don't invest in yourself through personal development, you're actually depriving others of the opportunity to experience your talents and genius. And so there's a quote that, that, I, that I'm fond of that comes from uh, Wallace Waddles, of all people, The Science of Getting Rich. Wonderful where, book, one of my all-time favorites. I think I've absolutely. read that book about 30 times. Lots of wisdom, lots of wisdom in that book. But the quote that comes out and jumps out at me is that you render to God and humanity no greater service than to make the most of yourself. Mm. You render to God and humanity no greater service than to make the most of yourself. And that really is the... I guess that's the, that, that, that would be the seminal thought behind what we, what we currently do here. And I, I know you're going to probably ask me a few things about that later, but the bo bottom line is that that's what at my core is what I wanted my mission to be, to help people be the best they could be at who they are and what they do, help them develop as individuals so that they become more valuable to themselves and therefore more valuable to the community around them, and then teach them how to share those gifts for profit at that. Mm -hmm. So, when someone wants to be, they say, okay, Glenn, you know, you're right. And I, and I haven't been doing that as much as I, as I really should. And this is something that could really help me. 
what are some of the ways that people can begin the process of personal development? I'm a, you know, I'm a book person, but I also uh, listen and I, I watch it and so forth. But forget about me. What can people do to, you know, aside from reading a book, to really begin the journey of personal development? Wow, there, there are so many options today for that, Bob, that we could be here for two or three hours just talking about them. But I, I know we don't have two or three hours, so let me see if I can quickly zero in. But I don't think that there's been a better moment in time for people who want to invest in themselves to have both the opportunity and the resources to do it. Today, one of the fastest growing industries is online courses. You can take an online course on virtually any topic you can possibly think of with a few button clicks. Now, that's truly a game changer. Think about it. Back in the day, before there was an internet, you had a choice of buying correspondent courses that got shipped to you, information products, buying books, or attending live workshops or in-person workshops or doing some personal coaching. Today, with a few button clicks, you can bring the classroom onto your computer screen. So online courses, virtual uh, discussion groups, group coaching, where you're online. You know, Zoom is used as, as, a, as a platform to conduct group coaching where people are able to collaborate, share ideas with each other, similar to what we're doing right here. This mm -hmm. is basically a virtual group coaching call right now for people <laughs> paying attention, and, and it happens to be free. So good for you if you're doing that too. Um, obviously, there's, you know, there, there are uh, discussion forums. You know, going back in the day before live streaming and, and some, of the uh, some of the social media groups came into vogue, the predecessor, the grandfather of those was discussion groups, discussion forums where you right. run, logged in and shared ideas back and forth. So when you look at the full array, you know, we, now we've got live stream events and webinars and all kinds of things. And I will tell you that for every person that will take the time to read a book, there are probably a hundred that are not readers. Yeah. So being able to listen to audio files, podcasts, online courses fills a gap in the marketplace for people who are not avid readers. So when I tell you that the opportunities today are better than they've ever been, I can say that both with authority and have it be true. Yeah. Uh, okay. I want to ask you about yours because Glenn, uh, and, I, and I loved our conversation uh, yesterday and uh, or a couple of days ago, I think it was, because you were telling me, and I just found this fascinating, but I, I got to say, not surprising because I think everything that you've done uh, since our first conversation, I think has led up to this. You've kind of created, I, I wrote down because I, I wrote down the words I wanted to use. I call it an ecosystem for personal development. That's really what you've created, correct? Exactly. And you're right. Everything that we're doing today represents an evolution over what I have learned over the past 20 to, five, 20 to 25 years. So, that, that just shows you the importance of remaining loyal to the purpose, the product or the mission, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the method may change. And that's what's happened is that technology has evolved and we've evolved with the technology, but it's always been the same mission of finding ways to make it easier for people to invest in themselves through personal development. So yeah, so what we're doing today, the organization that we've created is called Abundant Society. And, and it kind of encapsulates exactly what we're doing here. We want to teach people how to create abundance in their lives and we want them to do it in a communal way. And so abundant society has real relevance in terms of the language that we chose there. We're putting people in the company, connecting them and in the company of each other so that we can learn together, earn together and grow together. And so everything that we do at abundant society is designed to facilitate that, make it simple and easy for people to invest in themselves through personal development and to do it in the company of others who are making that a priority for themselves. Very nice. I love that. Uh, let's see. I'm looking Bruce Corkill. He's reading Wallace Waddles right now. Uh, awesome. Bruce. Uh, let's see. Uh, Shannon uh, put that, put, uh, put tips on success.com in the discussion window again, which is your, uh, uh, which is the URL. And let's see, I'm looking for some of the other comments here. People have been writing. Uh, okay. And again, if you, if you have, cause we're getting near the end. So if you have a question for Glenn, anything you want to uh, ask him about, uh, feel free. All right, Glenn Garns. I also wrote down because I wanted to, add, oh yeah. Okay. Here it is that you have an upcoming online event. I want to know how we can learn. Uh, more. Oh, hello, Elizabeth Engen. Great to see you. Chris Brogan is on the line too. Hello. Uh, let's see. And there was somebody else I saw. Uh, Jeff West just wrote, hi, Chris. Chris, Jeff West just said, hi, I'm being the conduit here. 
And uh, let's see, Timothy Prentice is, uh, uh, oh, Timothy Prentice just asked, are people willing to pay for this online training? You know, it's interesting. That's great. That's a great question, actually, Glenn, because there's so much out there that's free. Um, do you find it's an issue? Um, I mean, you know, we sell our, our courses, Kathy and I do, and, and we find, yeah, people will pay. They'll, they'll pay for what they feel is of value. But what's your thought about that? Do people, do you get resistance from people? Is Why should I pay for online training? Let me answer the question this way. Online learning is currently a $110 billion a year industry of which $11 billion is devoted exclusively to personal development, self-help education. That's scheduled to grow by 2022 to over 252 billion online learning and about 25 billion in self-help education. So yeah, you could, there are a lot of free resources on the internet, but here's what people are attracted to. They're attracted to things that are complete. So if someone has a complete course that's organized well and it's well presented, they'd rather take that course than have to search all over YouTube to find and piece together their own curriculum. So the bottom line is a lot of the value in these courses is knowing that everything you need from A to Z is contained in the course. And there's no guesswork about whether you've got the right information, the right resources, or the right system for implementing whatever it is you're looking to learn. That's where the real value comes into play there. So there, there, there are certainly people who are willing to do the self-taught, find it on my own type of approach, but the market for people who just want to be guided by someone who has more experience than they do with the subject Mm -hmm. is absolutely tremendous. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Timothy just wrote nicely said Glenn, and I agree. Uh, by the way, Elizabeth Ingen, who, who came on from Minnesota, she is great. Make sure you, you click on her. Uh, she was on our, she wasn't on, you weren't on, on our live show, right? You were on the podcast, I think, a couple months ago. She has great information, so make sure you, you uh, check her out. Um, let's see. Learn more to promote. Oh, Philip Georgeson. Yeah, would love to learn more to promote. And uh, let's see. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I wanted to ask you. Tell us about the upcoming online event. Uh, so go you've ahead. already shared. You've already shared the URL. So yeah. we are and hosting. Shannon will share it again now too. Sure. Absolutely. So we're hosting a live stream event on Facebook, which of course wasn't pop possible 20 years ago. I'm glad <laughs> I waited till this point because this is great. But we're going to be basically featuring the speakers that are part of the Abundant Society Network. We have literally right now over 80 speakers that have joined us in the last 90 days to come and share their tidbits of wisdom. And we're going to be starting on January 2nd, live streaming from 7 to 9.30 p.m. once a week and, and presenting four speakers a night on different topics that people have interest in, general personal development, health and wellness, professional development, entrepreneurship, all the things that people want to know about. We're going to be presenting people who have expertise with those subjects. Now, the reason that's important is because that's all free. You can be plugged into that, get connected to quality people, find coaches, mentors, and all kinds of other new relationships by just tuning into the free live stream event. So you can easily get plugged into the live stream event by going to the URL that Bob provided earlier, which is tipsonsuccess.com, www.tipsonsuccess.com. I'm sorry, strike that. It's abundancein30days.com. Tipsonsuccess.com takes you to the main website for Abundant Society where you can get on our general mailing list. But if you want to be notified of all the details as we're approaching the January 2nd launch date, then go to AbundanceIn30Days.com. AbundanceIn30Days.com. And all you got to do is put in your name and your email address, and we're just going to keep you posted on what's happening, when it's happening. We'll, we'll, we'll display a, a really good-looking cat from one, once in a while. <laughs> and yeah, the, the, is that the go giver kitty? <laughs> yeah, this is my associate producer. His name is Calvin. There you go, Calvin. Getting ready to be uh, promoted to producer. Fantastic. Yeah. So, so, you wanted, so you wanted to say hi. So it's really easy for you to get plugged in. Just get on the mailing list, and we're going to send you updates and, and reminders and let you know exactly what the schedule is going to be and the agenda is going to be. We also promise not to turn that into a constant sales pitch to do stuff with us. We really just want to build this community of people who have an interest in this subject who can join us in the conversation about personal development. Well, Glenn Garns is a retired trial attorney who went from that field to devoting his life around creating opportunities for others to invest in themselves through self-help 
education. You just heard he just started a new personal development community called the Abundant Society. Tipsonsuccess.com looks fantastic. New online course coming up, uh, Abundance in 30 Days. You can find out more about that at AbundanceIn30Days.com. And I've been noticing that Shannon's been posting that like she always does. She's so awesome and does everything just so amazingly well. Um, let's see. Oh, if you haven't picked up uh, John David Mann's and my newest book in the Go-Giver series, it's called The Go-Giver Influencer. You want to pick that one up? Oh, I see Glenn holding it up right there. Thank you, kind sir. Notice the shirts match uh, with the book. That was purposely done. I've, I'm just so color coordinated. I don't know if uh, they can see it since you're, the camera's probably on you. So let me just say something real quick. This <laughs> is a game changer. Get uh, this book today. Thank you. That's Glenn. all I'm going to say. Appreciate that. And uh, let's see, our Go Giver Entrepreneurs Academy, uh, third weekend, I think it is in January. Uh, we limit it to 10, as you know. We drive very deep into two days. Uh, we have two spaces left. I think probably that it's because we have three people who have uh, told us they're signing up for it. So I think that's probably already done. But Stay tuned just in case, but, um, but we'll let you know when the next one's coming up. Or you can always write to Kathy, kathy at thegogiver.com for her to hold the space for the next one that we have, and then she'll get with you before we start advertising to the public. Uh, let's see. Uh, make sure you join our Go Giver Influencers Facebook group on Facebook. Lots and lots of fun, and I think that is pretty much it from here Brother Glenn Garns, I want to say thank you to you. You just, uh, just every time I speak with you, I always first feel so great connecting with a longtime friend, but I also learn something from you every time. So thank you. Well, Bob, you've been most gracious in inviting me to be on this broadcast. And I really appreciate the fact that you are so committed to helping people with this core mission that I share with you of helping people to be the best they are, the best they can be at who they are and what they do. Oh, thank you. I believe in it very much. So on behalf of my cat and associate producer, Calvin Coolidge-Berg, this is Bob Berg saying so long. Have a great week. See you next week with another great interview and make it a fantastic day.